Welcome to the green room on a Friday, Tati and Jason. Uh, we hope that you caught the show. If you did not, that's why we're here on Plus. Right. Uh, part of the show was devoted to pizza, weird pizza. Weird pizza. So Michelle does her dine in the deed thing every Friday, and she found this place that has cool names, interesting toppings, and, and watch it. You gotta see it. I really liked mine a lot. All right, well, October is National Pizza Month. You've been celebrating? Oh, yeah. Okay, <laughs> so we thought today for Dine in the D, we take you to a place that is serving up some unique slices. Their motto is keeping pizza weird, which makes this restaurant a perfect place to get dinner for spooky Halloween. Michelle Oliver is taking us to downtown Detroit to check out Pizza Cat Max. With toppings like beef brisket and seafood? Yes, that's crab and shrimp under all that cheese. Pizza Cat Max in downtown Detroit is keeping pizza weird. Ensuring that everyone has the opportunity to eat the pizza that they want to eat. Even if it's just a sausage pizza, or if it's the kind of person who wants 15 toppings on their pizza. That's Matt Witowitz, the founder of Pizza Cat. Pizza Cat started out in Toledo, Ohio. I left working at another pizza place and decided I wanted to start my own. And it needed to be weird and different. It had to be a unique flavor that came from the Midwest. But their flavors and toppings aren't the only things that make them stand out. What we make is something that's always a thin crust. And we've got the toppings going all the way to the edge, obviously and uh, the crust comes all the way up there, touches up with the toppings, and your last bite should be as good as your first bite. The restaurant has a strong 80s and 90s feel with the neon signs on the walls, which goes along well with the name. The internet came up with Pizza Cat, so it was just uh, like an internet meme, and I went and got the name and the dot com and opened a real pizza place with it, and there was nothing the internet could say to stop me. How they're keeping things weird here at Pizza Cat. We'll start off with their cheese bread. It has several different kinds of cheese on it, including Parmesan. There's also a six cheese cheddar blend. There's Italian herbs and spices, and it comes with either ranch or marinara sauce. A great thing to pair along with one of your pizzas is their wings. Now they come 10 per order, they're oven baked, and they come with a variety of different sauces. You have 20 to choose from. This one is a very classic buffalo sauce with Frank's Red Hot, and it comes with more sauce and of course, ranch. If you're looking for a quick lunch, you should really check out one of their steamed bagel sandwiches. They have quite a few to choose from. This one is their 3XP because it has three times the amount of pepperonis. There's 30 slices on there along with their pizza cheese and their pizza sauce. Moving on now to their pizzas, one of their most popular ones is this no pork meat lovers pizza. So you have three different kinds of beef on there, including brisket, corned beef, and ground beef. You also have chicken and turkey bacon. From one end of the spectrum to another, this is their all veggie Wu-Tang pizza. So this has five veggies below the cheese, four on top, and they include red onion, green pepper, mushroom, banana pepper, pineapple, spinach, roasted red pepper, jalapeno, and artichoke. For you seafood lovers out there, check out the Trapper's Alley pizza. Now this may look like a cheese pizza, but that's because all the goodness is underneath. You have a garlic parmesan sauce, as well as crab and shrimp. And finally, we have their Corktown Deluxe. So underneath the cheese, you have all the veggies, including mushrooms, green peppers, and red onions. And then on top, you have sausage and bacon. Right. So, what did you order for us today? Yeah, so I asked you guys what you wanted. Jason got the South Side J. So that has pepperoni, it has bacon on there, and then banana peppers. For Tati, we got the gluten-free yes. cheese pizza. And this kind of goes into things for people with dietary restrictions. Mm -hmm. They have several different kinds of crusts you can choose from. A cauliflower, which is also gluten-free. Mm -hmm. The gluten-free crust, and then a chicken crust if you want to go keto. Mm -hmm. They also have vegan cheese, so you can basically mix and match to make it exactly what you want. Jason, what do you think? It's supposed to have more cheese and toppings, kind of thinner crust. Absolutely phenomenal. Good. Oh, okay. really, really, really good. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. And then, so this is the other one we have. This is their North End brisket. 
and it has obviously a quarter pound of brisket. You have sweet baby raised barbecue sauce on there, lots of cheese. It's just a very savory. Yeah, when pizza. you first opened it up, I thought it was a um, chicken, barbecue, barbecue chicken. Barbecue chicken, because that's pretty common. So, yeah, yeah, very common. That looks good. So you said in the piece that their, their pizza has a Midwestern flavor. What do they mean by that? I, obviously the names. Yeah, but. the names, but I think a lot of what they mean is that it's flavors you could find, as he put it, at a local Meyer or Kroger. So they okay. use sweet baby raised barbecue sauce to make that barbecue sauce. They put a lot more cheddar in the cheese because we like cheddar. Got their it. sauces are a little bit sweeter and spicier because that's kind of more Midwestern style mm -hmm. as opposed to... Um, as opposed to like pure Italian. Okay. So it's kind of a, it, it, he catered it to what to we where like we to are. eat here. And they yeah. were originally in Toledo, so they, they got yeah, their feet they wet a little bit. They know, they know what up. we like. So now where are they located? Pizza Cat Max is located in downtown Detroit, right near Greektown Casino. It's on the corner of Fort and Brush. It's located in the basement of that building. If you've been to the old Ready Player One, mm -hmm. it's in that same location. Okay, it's in that space. I was yep. wondering what was going to take that over. Who or what was going to yes. take it over? So it, it's another kind of very like nostalgic place okay. with... with Pizza. The pizza. All right, Michelle, thank you so much. Oh, what were you so saying? quickly, I finished a slice of pizza. That's okay. Oh, I can't believe that's like a, you should do us like a timed eating contest. It's so <laughs> good. Just enjoy. Thanks, Michelle. All right, well, if you want restaurant recommendations and behind the scenes chats with fellow foodies, sign up for the Dine in the D newsletter. Michelle's latest newsletter features the history of Detroit style pizza, plus a whole lot more. To sign up, look for the newsletter tab at the top of clickondetroit.com. Dang, that pizza was good. Go ahead, have some more. <laughs> So Greg Russell came in, as he always does, uh, on a weekly basis mm -hmm. to talk movies, what's new, what you should know about. Key and Peele getting back together. Yeah, this is a great, great reunion, yeah. I call it. So, you know, he always lets us know what to watch, what to expect, what to think, what to... You guys had a good chat? Yes, we did. So we'd like you to watch that right now. Overflowing, buttery popcorn like a volcano. <laughs> Some new streaming movies out for Real Talk this week that will tap into feelings of fear but also fun. Movie reviewer Greg Russell is with us once again. What's going on, Greg? Doing well. How about yourself? Good. We'll start with the new movie out on Netflix this morning that reunites Metro Detroit native Keegan Michael Key and his partner Jordan Peele. Of course, these two are hilarious together. Absolutely. Let's talk about Wendell and Wild. I'm so glad they're back together. I mean, even though this is somewhat of an animated feature, they play two demons who want to get out from the underworld. So they recruit this girl who is trying to find friends to help them get out. And so she finally comes on board, and next thing you know, it's all heck breaking loose. <laughs> Let's look at a clip. We are the magician mortician, the artists of the afterlife. <laughs> As your masters, we order you to turn around and, uh... <sighs> You're tripping. All right. Cat demons are raising an army of the dead. <laughs> the other unique thing about this movie is it's actually stop motion. I thought it was just animated. But really? Yeah. Uh, according to everything I've read, this is real stop motion. But yeah, it's, it's very unique and very interesting to watch. And it's just fun. It's, you know, just would remind you of, you know, stuff we used to watch when we were kids. Just this kind of like slapstick. So how many reels? Four for the kids. Okay. And for the adults, too. <laughs> uh, let's talk about another new movie out on Netflix with two huge uh, stars mm -hmm. in the cast. Jessica Chastain and Eddie Redmayne. It's called The Good Nurse, and it's a thriller that might be perfect for pre-Halloween weekend. It, it really is, because this is a true story which kind of is the most scary thing about it. Uh, Jessica Chastain's character is a nurse. She works overnight. She needs help, you know, like most people do who work overnight. They hire Eddie Redmayne's character to come in. Next thing you know, patients start passing away. Because mm. somehow or another, insulin is getting put into their medication. And it's up to her to try and figure out who's doing it and what's going on. Look at this. What do you mean? No, the hospital would have done something. You would think so. so. Yeah. Do you remember working with someone named Charlie Cullen? Yeah. There was a rumor about him. They found insulin in a dead guy's sailing bag. Hey, girls. Yeah! Come, sit. Why are you being weird, Mom? 
Okay, so this was, I think, loosely based on a true story. Yeah. Uh, how many reels? Four, for sure. I mean, very well acted. And like you said, it is scarier than a lot of horror movies. Yeah, All right. Because of what's going on. Finally, a new movie that's out that may bring back the frights you had when you saw The Exorcist. What? <laughs> Exorcism's back. It really is. I mean, there was a moment there, like in the 70s, specifically between The Omen uh -huh. and The Exorcist, yep. the Amityville Horror, where like, uh, you know, invisible, unseen, evil, possibly the devil, whatever, right. like had a moment. But, right. But now it's back. It is back for some reason. I don't know why, but it is back. And this deals with, uh, I guess the priest had, you know, stopped the exorcism schools. But next thing you know, there's been a worldwide epidemic of people becoming possessed. And they find out that this one nun, because it's normally just priests, no nuns, but this one nun has the ability to do exorcisms. Wow. Uh, it's called Pray for the Devil, and here is a clip. Uh, that was a pretty <laughs> that was a pretty good jump scare. It was. What are you hearing? You didn't see it, but what are you hearing about it? See, but I'm hearing that it is scary as all outdoors, as the old saying goes. Really? Yeah. And, and like I said, like paranormal activity or yeah, or. And then just the whole, you know, obviously religious thing and everything, you know, trying to exercise the demons. All right. Oh, where can people see more of your interviews? Just go to MovieShowPlus.com, check out things there, and don't forget to sign up for our newsletter, which automatically puts you in line to win prizes. Thank so, you, Greg. Enough. Thank you, Jason. We should go see that movie together. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 and as we all know, Halloween is right around the corner. That also means that Dia de los Muertos is right around the corner as well, which is a huge tradition in Mexican culture. We have a huge Mexican population here, but there's a big event where you can take part at Valet Park this tomorrow, as a matter of fact, Saturday. Uh, you don't want to miss it and get to chat with them. We saw some food, some dancing, some good stuff. Any excuse that she can get to uh, roll her R's and show off her Spanish uh, lingo. Uh, how, what day is it? What event? How does it go? Check them out. <laughs> Dia de los Muertos, or Day of the Dead, is a two-day holiday in Hispanic culture that celebrates loved ones who have passed. It happens every year on November 1st and 2nd and embraces unique traditions. Rene Rodriguez with the Detroit Riverfront Conservancy is here to talk about an upcoming event to celebrate the cultural traditions of Dia de los Muertos. And we are also joined by Jaime and Luisa Carrillo with Ballet Folklorico Moyo Coyani Izel. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. <laughs> it's so great to have you guys here. Let's talk more about the holiday and what, what it's all about. Yeah, thanks for having us. Dia de los Muertos is a, is a Mexican holiday um, that celebrates the cultural traditions around um, the passing of our loved ones. It's mm -hmm. an opportunity for us to honor and remember our loved ones in a fun celebratory way. Mm -hmm. um, so we like to celebrate with food and music and dancing and all the things that make us remember our loved ones' lives here. Okay, so now what is the importance of the ofrendas to the holiday? Yeah, ofrendas are a significant part to the holiday as um, ofrendas or altars as they're mm -hmm. sometimes called. Uh, it's an offering to our loved ones that we're trying to remember on this day. So often you'll see photographs of uh, our loved ones on the altar, you'll see the foods that they enjoyed in life, beverages that they liked drinking, and yeah. maybe some tokens and mementos of theirs. Yeah, it's a nice way to remember people. I like it. But now, you, we have to talk about the food. So what, what items will be at this event? Yes, yeah, so we have our event tomorrow, um, and we will have Real Taco Express. Um, on site with all of their delicious foods. So some of the things you can expect to find tomorrow are delicious tacos, tortas, quesadillas, mm. um, as well as some of their Mexican pizza. We're also going to be sampling pan de muerto, which is day of the dead mm -hmm. bread. Um, and that will be coming to us courtesy of our friends at Mexican Town Bakery right here in Southwest Detroit. Very nice, very nice, very popular spot. Yes. There's a lot of good, good coffee um, there too. Yes. So <laughs> what kind of activities will be offered at this family friendly event? Yeah, we're 
we're going to have everything. We're going to start the event at 11 o'clock with the children's story hour. So it's a great um, time to bring out the kids in your life to learn about this uh, holiday. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll also have um, crafts that everyone can partake in. We'll have dancing with our ballet folklorico group. Yes. We will have um, a live musical performance by Adele Ruelas featuring Luna. Um, and then we'll also have um, here on Clinton Metro Parks on site telling us about the significance of butterflies and what they represent to uh, Dia de los Muertos. I love it. Bring the whole community together. Now, joining us are a few dancers. Hello, Hi. Luisa and Jaime. So tell us what you're going to be performing for us today and, you know, how it's significant to Dia de los Muertos. Sure. So as a dance group, we approach Dia de los Muertos by um, not only remembering and celebrating the loved ones that have passed, but, but by embracing the traditions that have been handed down to us. And in Ballet Folclorico, our Danza Isel, we teach danza, um, bailes, mestizos, and Ballet Folclorico. And the song that we're gonna perform for you today is a combination of those three. Okay. And if you wanna know a whole bunch more about that, come to the performance tomorrow, and Jaime does an amazing job explaining all of it. That's awesome. Yeah, but yeah. so we'll, the, the song that we're gonna perform is from the state of Sinaloa, and it's called Fiesta de la Taspana. Okay. Take it away. You're going to give us a little bit of a dance, we'll right? Give you a snippet, yeah. All right, I'll take that. And of course it's Friday, so why not, you know, take part in a little vino? You were trying to actually find something that matched your palate perfectly? What was happening here? Uh, I did find, uh, we're going to do a, a taste test. <laughs> well, we did a taste test, and now we're, you guys are going to watch this, and you'll figure out which one that I liked the best. Okay, and you also learned what to consider when you're picking a wine, right? Uh, yes, there's three pointers that you could listen to right now and make your friends happy the next time they come to have wine at your house. Pro tips. Fall, winter, spring, summer, let's face it, every season is wine season. There are different types of vino that pair with any type of uh, time of year, and Michigan is home to many selections, but I've run into a problem. Take a look. I, I will be, uh, you know, you know I don't pull punches. I will be honest. I yes. have yet to discover... Uh, a Michigan wine where I'm like, I need five bottles of this right now. So I have it, you know, in storage at home, ready, for, you know, for entertaining or whatever. I'm still waiting to find that, uh, that Bonanza. Remember I was talking about mm -hmm, Bonanza? Mm -hmm. I'm still waiting for that, like, really bold cab. Well, and I, I think I'm going to be waiting a long time. <laughs> okay, so that was back in August. And now we've invited Courtney Casey owner of Michigan by the Bottle Tasting Room to come to the studio with some options of Michigan wines that she thinks are stellar. First of all, welcome back, Courtney. Thank you so much for having me. Go green. <laughs> Go blue. Oh boy. <laughs> I'm surrounded. <laughs> all right, uh, before we get to what you brought, uh, first give me and everybody watching advice on the three things that you think we should consider when we're trying to find that new wine. Absolutely. So I think the first thing is to find somebody that you trust. Like, I'm going to be your wine guru. All right. So I'm going to come back as many times as necessary, hopefully, to, to get you a wine that you love. Come but back all the time. <laughs> find a wine guru of your own, whether it's at a tasting room, at a winery, at a wine bar, at a store, who you can become friends with, and they get to know your preferences, and they can steer you in the right direction for the wines that you like. All um, right. Also, well, you need to have no preconceived, preconceived notions. notions. <laughs> Go in with an open mind which is why we're doing some blind tasting today there was a place in royal oak called vinoteca mm -hmm. and uh, i used to go in there this is like 14 years ago and they had a bold cabin there that had sediment in the bottom mm -hmm. like and i was like oh man i need that all my <laughs> life and of course that that uh, what would you say vintage mm -hmm you know, ended, and it yeah. was never quite the same. So anyway, what did, what did you bring in? <laughs> there is a lot of vintage variation. Well, the other thing was, real quick, never stop learning and exploring. Oh, there's always more to learn about wine. There's always more to find about wine. So just keep looking. If you haven't found the one you love, you will find it. I, I promise you. Okay. <laughs> All right, so I brought three Michigan wines, and this was a really difficult decision because there are plenty of delicious Michigan reds. I know what you like, so I'm trying to kind of aim for your palate. Um, so let's go for number one here on the end. Um, this is going to be 
a, I want you to try it before I tell you what it is, um, but just to, just to make a note for, for anyone who isn't really familiar with Michigan wine, uh, you know, if you're used to drinking California wines, a big, jammy, bold Cabernet Sauvignons, the Michigan wines are going to be a little bit more in a French style, so a cool climate red wine. There's definitely going to be a little bit of a difference between that and a Napa Cab, um, but they are more food friendly. They're higher in acid. They're more, le they're less likely to overpower the food like okay. a big jammy California Cab would do. Are you going to reveal these one at a time? I am sure. Yes. So number one here is one of my current favorites, which is the Domaine Berry and Cellars. Cabernet Sauvignon. This is the 2020 vintage. This is from Southwest Michigan. Okay. Um, and it is a um, the the person who grows the grapes, Wally, is the owner of the winery along with his his wife Katie. So this is um, he's right. growing the grapes and making the wine. Here comes number two. All right. So number two, give it a swirl, give it a taste. So definitely a lot more in the French style, and if you are used to that big jammy style, it does take some getting used to, but it doesn't make it an inferior wine. It's just a different style. Okay. What is this? Okay. <laughs> so this one is actually from Petoskey. This one is from Mackinac Trail Winery up in Petoskey. This one is a red blend called Cuvée 7. Okay. Um, so there's Cabernet Sauvignon, Cabernet Franc, Malbec, Syrah, all kinds of good stuff in there. All right. Want to okay. try number three? Here comes number three. All right. Michelle, I'm saving these uh, three up front for you. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like this one is going to be your favorite, just based on what you uh, what you okay, usually what is like. It? But okay, this one is this one's called Show. It's a Bordeaux style red blend. This one's from Wincroft, also in Southwest Michigan. Um, so I have a little bit from some different regions here. And this one, Show, is the um, Chinese symbol for longevity. So that is Show. And this, these are all very popular red wines in our tasting rooms. And I figured this would give you a little bit of a Range here. What are you feeling? Give it to me. This one's the winner, right here. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, you can you can take that home with you. <laughs> Thank you. Cuvée number seven. So if you favorite. like these, there are plenty of other Michigan red wines that are in this this style, um, and I think that you will find plenty to enjoy. But all you got to do is just keep. Well, first find your guru. Like I said, keep seeing me and uh, keep trying new things. Tell us about Michigan <laughs> by the bottle and your tasting rooms. Mm -hmm. If people want to try, uh, you know, other wines, these wines, come talk to you. How, yes. do, how do they get in touch? I would love to be their wine guru as well. So we are located in Royal Oak, Shelby Township, and Auburn Hills. You can come in Wednesday through Sunday and do a tasting. Um, you can come in for events. We have winemaker dinners, wine education classes, all kinds of fun stuff. And we are uh, all over social media. So come see us and, and see what we have coming up. Website? MBTBtasting.com. Again? MBTBtasting.com. MBTBtasting.com. <laughs> yes. All right. Thanks for coming in. All right. Thank you Always so much. Always good to see you. Yeah, great to see you. All right. Did I, go blue. Did I surprise, go, go green. Did I surprise <laughs> you that I didn't pick that one? Yeah, I did. But That I was think, actually my least favorite. Oh, well, I love all of these. So oh, I don't think one, any of two, our customers three. can go wrong with any of these. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us for Live in the D in the Green Room on a Friday. We hope you have a wonderful weekend, and we will see you on Monday. Go green. Go white. Nah. <laughs>